ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's Up With That, the show that brings you interesting people, places, cultures, and subcultures here in the South Bay, the Bay Area, and beyond. And tonight, the discussion is cults. What's up with cults? Well, recently the airwaves have been inundated with images of strange-looking people wearing strange clothes, uh, people willing to commit mass suicide in the name of a certain vision. And right now, well, there's a cult that's up on that comet up in the air heading for space. Well, what's up with that? And what drives people into becoming a cult member? Well, tonight in our discussion of what's up with cults, I'd like to welcome our guest, Dr. Keith Harari. He is an editor-at-large for Omni Mag Magazine. And um, he's going to give us some light on the issue of cults. Well, um, how would you, as an expert in um, cult activity, define a cult? What is a typical cult? When you define a cult, <coughs> you're not thinking about, you're not talking about what people believe. People mm -hmm. are, are free to believe whatever they want, mm -hmm. really. This is America. Believe what you want. What we're talking about is a very authoritarian structure in which there are very heavy mind control techniques mm -hmm. um, used on the people in which there's a, a vertical kind of relationship, not um, horizontal would be um, talking one person to the other, one member to another. Mm -hmm. This way, the authority is in the group, all making decisions together, decisions together vertically. It all comes from on high, the leader, everybody is not directly in relation to each other so exactly. much as their relationship has to do with all of their relationship with this leader on mm -hmm. high. So, <coughs> so it's, it's like this animal farm kind of thing where there's this, this great master kind of... Yeah, um, real belief in, in the leader. What you have are um, strict controls on um, things like diet, sexuality, mm -hmm. um, right. really the, the freedom of information flow mm -hmm. in the group itself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way, there are many, many, many very detailed definitions mm -hmm. of a cult. Um, for me, one of the things that will really um, just, just sort of highlight it is that the emphasis is on pulling the individual into the group, more mm -hmm. and more into the group, away from society at large, uh -huh. away from the family, right. away from being a productive because member of society, and right into the group. Well, I'm sure the family would be, you know, possesses a, a great um, problem for, you know, somebody who was going to be joining a cult or the cult in general. You know, when you look at the images of the media, and uh, we had discussed it earlier, the media is great for making images. You know, you have the, uh, the guy from Heaven's Gate who just looked weird. I mean, he just looked strange. There's no other way to describe it. You have the teenagers who had uh, those three boys who had killed that girl in uh, New Jersey. They were part of a satanic cult. They dressed alike. They did this kind of ritual killing, actually. Um, however, with Heaven's Gate, what was different is that, as opposed to the People's Temple, with these people in Heaven's Gate were professional professionals. They <laughs> That's true in a lot of cults. Is it? And, and um, by the way, as far as pulling the family in, People's Temple pulled whole families in. Right. That was one of the reasons that people had a hard time leaving. Oh, I because see. the groups were, the families were not kept intact in the group. Mm -hmm. They were broken up, but still the whole family being in the group. So that you would have um, oh, couples having, having sexual relations with other people, everything so, to break down the family. But then when you wanted to leave, even if certain people wanted to leave, they were afraid of leaving their mother, father, So the, the kids behind. in the People's Temple actually know who their mother and father was? Sure. But um, you, you could for example, want to leave the group, mm -hmm. but be afraid to talk to your wife about your concerns, let's get out of here, mm -hmm. because sh her allegiance is to the group and she's liable mm -hmm. to turn you in and then you're in trouble. Um, as far as the people looking alike in the media, all the people, uh -huh. uh, okay, um, cult members are, um, are us. Mm -hmm. they're, they're regular people right. who get into a very bad situation. They don't join because they're crazy. Cults don't want people who are crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, crazy is a, not a technical word, but you get uh -huh. the idea. You mean like, a, yeah. yeah not, they don't want people who are really psychologically disturbed. Right. What they want are people who are going to be good, productive members of the cult. Functioning people, they can help their cause. Functioning within the group and not functioning in mainstream society. So what traits and what characteristics would you say are the kind of traits that are most across the border consistent with a person who would join a cult? Because I would think, 
being an outsider, not knowing a lot about cult activity, that the person might be a person who has a lack of self-esteem. It might have a, be a person who does not have a lot of friends. They're looking for <coughs> some kind of place to fit in. Is that really part of it? All of us are vulnerable at some point in our lives. You think about your, your listeners, viewers now. Mm -hmm. Who have you, in your life, have you ever fallen in love with the wrong person? Mm -hmm. Hopelessly ridiculous, you fell in right. love with this, you had a crush on this person. Several times. Right, okay. <laughs> now, what if that person had a hidden agenda for you? Right. What if they wanted to take those strong emotions and turn them against you? Mm -hmm. Right. That right. could be done particularly at a point of real vulnerability, a time mm -hmm. when, for example, you might have lost a job, you might have mm -hmm. broken up a marriage, someone might have died, you might be on the road. We're all vulnerable at some mm -hmm. point. You meet some people who are friendly, who seem very interested in you, right? and very fascinated with what you have to say, and they mm -hmm. tell you some compelling uh -huh. things, and they draw you in, and it begins to feel a little bit homey. Yeah, they're like, well, you know, we can help you. Uh, we, we understand. We understand. We care about you. Uh -huh. We can be very nice, very friendly. Right. Um, and they're very sincere. They think uh -huh. that they have something good for you. Right. Um, as you get into the group and you begin to have your sleep patterns disrupted, which is very typical. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was typical in Heaven's Gate. You're looking right. at people being put on shifts of four hours of sleep, four mm -hmm. hours awake, four hours for months at a time. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Well, I mean, it, it, it's been proven <coughs> that... In rats test animals that that completely messes up their entire equilibrium so that and and change the diet in heaven's gate for example um months at a time of a liquid diet um handful of vitamin pills mm -hmm. wait several hours eat a cinnamon roll and this yeah, kind of yeah your just system just going. so you know, you're getting in, in a lot of cults you're getting um not a lot mm -hmm. of um, protein or other things so mm -hmm. break down sleep you affect the nutritional patterns mm -hmm. you bring the person into the group with a lot of peer pressure right. and away from other sources of information. Because I know that there are some um, cults, uh, one in particular, that gives a personality test. And from what I've learned from members of this, now some people may not think they're cults, but I think um, the viewers will probably know who I'm talking about. Um, they give a personality test. They'll go with the person that they're giving the test to. And they'll say, well, you know, you really did good on, on 18 of these, you know, but here's two that, according to our experts, um, we can help you with these. Um, it, this is a tactic. What other tactics do they use? I mean, cults, how do they find their people? Um, there is everything from advertising on the Internet to having people on the street handing out leaflets to um, having people invite you to dinner, to um, things that look very glitzy. By the way, all cults are not religious cults. You have political cults. Mm -hmm. You have every kind of cult. Right. Um, it could be, see, this is the thing. When you feel invulnerable, I mm -hmm. wouldn't ever get involved in something where people are thinking they're going to go take a UFO to a comet, you know, mm -hmm. or, or take a UFO behind a comet. And but they did, you but know. But you might say that, but there might be another situation that you or somebody else would be uh -huh. involved. Maybe they think they're going to a, a business seminar. Right. Maybe they think they're going to some pseudo-scientific thing in parapsychology or mm -hmm. something. Maybe they think they're going to learn about healing. Maybe they uh -huh. think they're going to, who knows. So they think that they're actually, you know, this is going to benefit them. There's a lot of um, thing, good things to come out of joining this group. And then they get into the cult, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Depends they, on the group, but usually what happens is, um, here would be a scenario. Okay, let's say I'm, I'm your A scenario right now. I've just come in. You have gotten me from whatever means possible, and I am now inside the premises of your space. Right. People's Temple, I invite you to this group because we're overcoming racism together or whatever, oh, right? Okay. Um, or another group, you know, you're interested in UFOs? You know, heavens, we have some interesting things about it. We're all interested. Oh, okay. And now you begin to hear this um, rhythm of belief is what I call it. You begin okay. to pick up the beat, and that is about this amazing person, mm -hmm. this incredible person, okay. who has so much to say. Uh -huh. you, you know, you must hear. It's so <laughs> fascinating, you know. Right. And and, and and you must hear them, and you know, you begin to. Now, what you may not know in some groups is you may find yourself eventually in a room with mm -hmm. people who have just come to hear the whole thing, like you have. They've just come because what the heck? Uh -huh. And you find that. All these people in the room are getting really excited about what's right. being said. 
you may not find out for quite a while that you, uh, you and maybe one other person in the room uh, were the, the, only, yeah, the only new ones. Right. Um, I was wondering, um, that's very interesting because I'm sure it's a very staged kind of thing, you know, uh -huh, yeah. performance. You'd be amazed. I've heard of cult leaders literally um, sending trusted members out to buy books on mind control. Oh, sure. To, to study. And why would somebody do that? Because mm -hmm. they would do that to, because they think for the cause it's okay. You would be uh -huh. amazed what people do for the cause. Oh, yeah. In Jim Jones' case, mm -hmm. he would do phony psychic demonstrations. Of, what um, do you mean by phony <coughs> psychic demonstrations? Well, I mean they kept rotting animal liver in plastic bags under the, um, and organs, under the, under the temple on uh -huh. Geary Street. They would pull it out. He would, um, <laughs> he would find out about a member being, not feeling well, being sick. Mm -hmm. The way he would do that is if you were interested in being a member, he'd send a couple of people to your house to talk with you. Well, one had you engaged, the other would be going through your medicine cabinets and drawers. Oh, so my. now they have the stuff about you. They know uh -huh. you're not feeling well. Uh -huh. You come to the church. He says, you know what? You have a tumor. Be healed. Uh -huh. And then seek and you shall. And then go with the nurse into uh -huh. the restroom and the tumor will pass from your body. Uh -huh. Then they display and they rotting liver out. Oh, was, no. Was, right. And how did, they, how did he know these things about you? That, right. Uh, right? And, and like that. And, and it's very compelling. Pretty it's much every very, cult leader claims yeah. to have psychic powers. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, they would have to do that because yeah. they need that, that power to keep their, their membership in, in, yeah. intact, I guess, shall we say. And to build up this sense that they're all powerful. Right. And, and, and if you look at all the... Um, so we're used to putting, um, giving money and belief uh -huh. to and, and support to people who claim to have psychic powers. Believe me, mm -hmm. I know a lot about this. I've been there mm -hmm. in that area. It's really scary I what will happen imagine. to people when they think that you have psychic powers. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy. Right. And cult leaders really exploit that to the hilt. Okay. Um, cults in the United States, are they on the increase or are they on the decrease? Good question. Um, it's really hard to get accurate numbers because cults pretty much across the board claim to have more members than they do. Yeah, of course. Right? <laughs> well, like, yeah. And people who don't like cults either try to play it down, mm -hmm. or they're not as big as that, or they try to play it up. So it's hard to get, uh -huh. right? But there are probably over 5,000 cults out there, and we still don't know uh -huh. everybody who's out there in the woods doing whatever. Uh -huh. um, so. It's really hard to know, probably on the, on the upswing, but then again, um, it's, it's, it's really, really hard to give an absolute figure. Yeah. Well, I would imagine that they would have a lot to lose from being completely out and Yeah, but what, about we're, seeing, what we're seeing now are millennial cults. Well, uh, cults talking about the, the end of the millennium yeah, is coming. Yeah, you know, that's a, a very interesting. Yeah. I would expect that now that we're at the millennium, we're at mm -hmm. the year 2000, this is going to be... And this is just something that I can see happening because you're talking about a thousand years passing. I expect or would make an intelligent prediction that cult activity is going to increase tremendously from this point on and that that's going to be a big draw. Oh, uh, oh it, it, or at least the focus on this apocalyptic vision right. that it's all coming to an end. Mm -hmm. Look, look, look. The end of the millennium, the end right. of an era. You'd better get with me, and you know there are and groups. save your soul, or all, whatever. All over the place. How about in other countries? Are there lots of? Well, you know there was, of course, the cult in uh, Switzerland. Or, Solar Temple. Yeah. And France and Canada. Right. Something like a thousand some odd members. Right. Three suicide um, exactly. situations already. Mm -hmm. Probably more to come. Yeah, they're expecting more to come. Actually, yeah. there's a group in Alberta somewhere where they, they've been monitoring them, and they're actually expecting that. You know, they're going to follow this trend, and it's related to s something well, higher than, I guess. Life is hard. That's the thing, is that life is hard. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's amazing if mm -hmm. you hang in there, but it's hard. And you didn't tell and me so, nothing I don't know. And so, <laughs> and so if something comes along and says to you, we're going to give you your ticket to heaven. We're going to get you mm -hmm. out of here on a flying saucer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you would be amazed at the people who find that tempting. Mm -hmm. But you say, well, I never believe anything like that. Mm -hmm. Tune into late night radio. And mm -hmm. you will hear in the middle of the night the people who are calling in, believing in the end time, in oh, the aliens. Sure. You know, there are God knows how many people out there. Just a, yeah. a lot. And if somebody uh -huh. comes along and wants to twist those beliefs, which are essentially a new religion. Right. And they want to twist those beliefs and turn them against someone who's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's possible. And to think, well, cult members are weirdos, and mm -hmm. that would never happen to me. You know who's most vulnerable, I think? Who? People who think they're not vulnerable. Because exactly. if you think you're not vulnerable, uh -huh. when you're in the group, you're telling yourself, I want to do this. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Very and good And this point. is a sign of my independence and invulnerability. Uh -huh. Right. I'm separating. I'm in complete yeah. control, yeah. and nobody has control over my destiny but myself, and that leads to trouble. It could lead to suicide, mm -hmm. the ultimate expression of independence right. and autonomy. And right? it has led to suicide. Exactly. Um, how do, okay, you talked about the, the thing with the people's temple with the liver and that kind of stuff. What other techniques do they use uh, to cult? members used to brainwash. Okay, we have deprivation. <coughs> we have, what are like some, let's talk about the People's Temple, okay? Um, what did the Reverend Jones do and his followers do to, uh, he had a big cult, you know, and he took 900 or so people to Guyana to build this utopia and... And he was his most, most faithful member. Oh, uh, was he? I mean, the cult leaders, uh -huh. as they're exploiting people and, and killing them and everything else mm -hmm. that they're doing. Um, what happens is, how does one human being take on the idea that they're God, mm -hmm. which he did, right. and, and all these people calling you Father and Divine mm -hmm. and all this stuff, yeah. you know, it's, it, 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 can, it can twist you. Um, once, you know, eventually in that situation, he isolated people in the jungle in Guyana. Uh -huh. And once he had them in that compound, it was his reality and he was making the rules. Mm -hmm. Something dramatic, by the way, talk about what techniques, what lengths will people go to. Um, in the solar temple, mm -hmm. they had... Um, Hollywood class holographic image projectors, <laughs> which they had hidden in, in, their, in their places, which they would use to project aliens, the Holy Grail Gee. in the sky, who knows mm. what all. And, and this, people didn't know uh -huh. that they were projectors. Right. They thought that they were encountering but were they real in like, visions. Were they in some sort of state of some kind of trance or something where they'd be more susceptible? I don't know, myself, I always look at a movie or something or the, watch something and tend to say, well, you know. Uh -huh, yeah, you mean if you walk in the room and see someone standing there? I mean, I mean this is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, we all, and no offense to you, we all mm -hmm. like to think of ourselves as very skeptical, but mm -hmm. maybe we are about certain things. Right. But that belief that you can't be fooled is what makes it possible to fool you. Mm -hmm. Because when you know you can be fooled, you say, mm -hmm. Wait a minute, am I being fooled again? Okay, I, yeah, right? I see. When you say, I uh -huh. can't be fooled, look at this, I'm having this experience, mm -hmm. you might be led to say, oh, this is real. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems illogical, mm -hmm. but human beings are not logical. Mm -hmm. And cult leaders know that extremely well. Now, working with um, ex-cult members, do you find it difficult to have them talk about their experiences? Do you, we have had a difficulty getting a cult member on the show. We went through the Santa Clara County Office of Mental Health and all kinds of stuff, and the people that we had talked to didn't want to, had nothing to do with it. They, did, they were like, no, this is a part of my uh, history that's gone. Yeah. Well, you must encounter, as, as a person who has you know, worked with people from the People's Temple, of course, I mean, that was, what, the largest cult-related mass suicide in the history of, as far as we know, the history of the modern world. And you have Masada too, but that was hardly a cult. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was one of the large, it was one of the big ones, let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Who knows what's coming? Right. But um, The millennium. And you look at the <laughs> Heaven's, Heaven's Gate and they tried to make it very organized, to mm -hmm. almost to say, oh look, we're different. But mm -hmm. um, what, you've, what you've got, there are, there are just thousands of these cult groups. There's mm -hmm. no one belief system, but what's really interesting is that the techniques that are used are used again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. and, and they work. That's mm -hmm. why they're used. So it's like human bondage, really. You continually, you know, it's like you're raising a child and you continually tell him that he's this or that and they're going to eventually take on certain characteristics. They, people are vulnerable. And one thing I want to mention is if people go to Omni's website on the World Wide Web, mm -hmm. Omni Magazine's website, um, we're going to have a Heavens, I'm going to be interviewing a Heavens Gate member tomorrow night uh -huh. live online. And also we have an actual test you can take to see just how susceptible you are to mm -hmm. cult manipulation. Um, because you'd be surprised you really... And how susceptible uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. are. Um, it's, I mean, it's really interesting. Um, 
and again, you, you just talked about Heaven's Gate. Now, in Heaven's Gate, they wore the same clothes. Okay, what is the, is this, what is the... Well, they wore the same clothes when they died. Okay. And they wore similar clothes. But look, the leader told them how to cut their hair. Uh huh. They, they ordered the same dinners. Right. They probably ate the same meals all the uh -huh. time, exact same kind of... And, and when you looked into the home in Rancho Santa Fe, um, there were bunk beds, you know, everybody was this communal living, looked like a fraternity or a dormitory or something like that. There was areas that were set up for classrooms, as a quote, quote unquote classroom, and that was probably where most of this type of stuff occurred. Um, what about the people's temple? What, what similar well actually with the heaven's gate the ultimate i think thing that disturbs me or i find difficult is the castration issue yeah well a lot of men find that difficult but um it's just a sign of how far people will go if you push them um what it is is and and this will help to at least i think help us to get some insight into things like suicide mm -hmm. murder we haven't even mentioned Aum Shinrikyo in Japan, right. where they exactly. gas the Tokyo subway. Uh -huh. okay, how do you get people to do things? Castration, right? things that How are do you do get people to, I mean, what's up with that? How do you get people to step that far? I mean, that's okay. a if you If you change the context of reality for mm -hmm. people, then what they are doing in their worldview in is their the right experience, thing. is a different thing than what it is for you. For example, in Heaven's Gate, not committing suicide, right? Uh -huh. They actually, in their web page, had a thing, our position against suicide. In their view, staying here, the world was going to be spaded under. By the way, it's, uh -huh. um, it's already April, according to the date on my watch, so they mm -hmm. missed the time. They said the end of, the, yeah. you know, the end of, well, it didn't oh, well, happen, uh, right? Yes. <laughs> March, right? Uh -huh. it, was, it, was, it didn't happen and they better get out of here because they're saving themselves to go mm -hmm. aboard the UFO. So they looked, they were told, and by the way, we shouldn't assume they all went quietly into that good right. night. You can, you can pose dead people to look any way you want. In People's Temple, um, Maybe, yeah. many people were murdered too. Yeah, that's, that's an, in, yeah. But well, in, in fact, I was going to bring up the issue about the People's Temple because in um, reading about the People's Temple, I understand that, you know, the first 300 or so, it was not so much of a problem, but they were, with their Kool-Aid and the arsenic and whatever, it's not a pretty sight. I mean, it's not a, a, a pleasant way to watch somebody die. And I guess by the end of the Jonestown Massacre, people were hiding, people were running around trying to get away. And no, they couldn't do that. What happened was, because uh, I have sat and really talked to somebody who was right there. Uh -huh. and, and what happened was, um, first of all, they got people into this context by doing these practice drills. So people didn't know this wasn't another practice. Okay. Once they were in the compound, surrounded in a certain position, mm -hmm. there were people with machine guns all around them. Whoa. Okay? So you drink or I will blow your brains out. It's that simple. What do you mm -hmm. want to do? Many people, from the very beginning, were held down and, and had stuff poured down their throats. They were forcibly yeah, injected. Yeah, because there was bruise they, marks and kind of thing they found they on shot. the bodies. Yeah. People did I mean, not want to die. Yeah. People didn't. And, think, and now, why did they, those people, at that last moment, snap out of it, but... The Heaven's Gate people seem to just, or did they? Again, it's a question. It's we don't pure know, speculation. Do we? What we're looking at is a situation where they had phenobarbital mm -hmm. and vodka, I mm -hmm. think it was. And, yeah. and, and once they were sauce. drugged, then, what's well, the applesauce that I find disgusting with <laughs> but, but, but it's the, um, <laughs> then, and then they had plastic bags put over their heads. So the question is, who put the plastic bags right. over their heads? Who posed the bodies? And for, just think about it, man. Mm -hmm. Who goes in the first group? They went in three different groups, right? So who, who goes went? in the first group? Who picks who goes in the first group? Are you going to put your most faithful followers in the first group? No. no. You're going to put the people in who you think might be wavering. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of people surrounding them. They have peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have someone holding them down. Maybe not. Even mm -hmm. if they don't. Mm -hmm. you, if I convince you that you'd better take a gun and blow your brains out because the aliens have landed outside this room and they're going to come in and tear your flesh off your body, right? And you believe that, uh -huh. and it's not true, uh -huh. then I've just murdered you. Right. So if, if we get the people in, if, if Applewhite got the people in Heaven's Gate, the members, mm -hmm. to believe that yep. they had to do this because of the Earth being, uh, the Earth was about to be destroyed and this was the way and they're part of the uh -huh. crew of, another, of a spaceship, it's like, right. right? That's murder. It is. It wasn't true. It wasn't true. It was brainwashing. 
Certainly. So whether or not they had to hold them down and physically uh -huh. pour the stuff down their throats, or whether mm -hmm. or not they said, I guess I have no choice. And I guess it's not going to matter once the media comes in, because the media is going to say, whoa, 40 people, mass execution, and, and that's Americans or uh, show a certain interest in that kind of stuff. If it bleeds, it leads. Yes, <laughs> don't it? If it bleeds, it leads. It's a journalistic thing, but, but we shouldn't forget that we're seeing human beings there who right. are saying to us, what they said it over and over again in the video, it's nothing for me here. I can't live in this world. Uh -huh. What kind of world have we created uh -huh. in which people feel they have to go join a cult to find any sense uh -huh. of belonging? And by the way, who joins cults? You asked me earlier. Uh -huh. Good decent people, the right. best and the brightest, people who want to make a difference, mm -hmm. who then get sucked into somebody's twisted reality right. and destroyed in the process. Uh -huh. Isn't, aren't those people worth saving? I think they yeah. are. I, I think, think they're worth caring about rather than calling mm -hmm. them nuts. Right. And that's, of course, the, the most saddest part of this whole thing is that so many people's lives are wasted and, um, you know, it's... it's we, could, we could use people in the mainstream uh -huh. who are willing to be that dedicated. How do you deprogram a cult member? Well, I don't deprogram, but... No, but, but from what you know, but what are the processes that... But really, we're talking about exit counseling. Okay. Because deprogramming generally has a sense of being a violent kind of thing, kidnapping uh -huh. people, which I think is unethical. Uh -huh. it's just and I have a friend that actually that had happened, the, the person had left a particular cult-like organization and found herself hiding in a motel room. Yeah terrified yeah but what what does the counselor do with the person uh, when people do exit counseling um, they try to show the person educate the person about what the process was that they went through help them explore what vulnerabilities got them into a cult mm -hmm. so, so there's there's an educational process then there are people who do psychotherapy on what that particular person's problems were what they were mm -hmm. looking for um, help them understand how this group is very much like other groups, because that's the amazing thing. Right. Is that if you don't focus on the beliefs, you focus on the process. You find mm -hmm. out that the process is pretty much across the board, um, right down the line, out of, almost out of the handbook. But um, if you help people understand that process, you can almost, um, the counselors can help people take that in reverse. Okay. And begin to get a sense of their identity okay. again. Okay, they get their sense of self back. And show them also, you know, people might, a counselor might show somebody uh -huh. contradictions within the within the belief system. I mean, there was a, a, a fellow in one cult I won't mention who was actually um, one of the designers of the um, patterns for bringing people mm -hmm. in. So he was great for getting people out. In one case, he read to a boy, a cult member, young kid, about. So he just read him from a book. He said, "Who said this?" And then leave. Go ahead. I don't want to uh -huh. keep you here. Who said this? He said the cult leader said this. Okay. He said that's fine. Handed him the book. He said. Do what you want. The book was Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. The kid <laughs> left the group. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for What's Up With That tonight. I'd like to thank um, Dr. Keith Harari for coming all the way down from Tiburon to join us. Um, I hope that this has been an informative show. And um, if you're walking down the street and you see something interesting and you wonder, hey, what's up with that? Tune into What's Up With That and maybe you'll find just what you're looking for. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week on What's Up With That. Good night. information flow mm -hmm. in the group itself mm -hmm. um, and and the way there are many 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 very detailed definitions mm -hmm. of a cult um, for me one of the things that will really um, just just sort of highlight it is that the emphasis is on pulling the individual into the group more mm -hmm. and more into the group away from society at large uh -huh. away from the family Right. away from being a productive because member of society and right into the group well I'm sure the family would be you know possesses a a great um, problem for, you know, somebody who was going to be joining a cult or the cult in general. You know, when you look at the images of the media, and uh, we had discussed it earlier, the media is great for making images. You know, you have the, uh, the guy from Heaven's Gate who just looked weird. I mean, he just looked... Uh, believe what you want. What we're talking about is a very authoritarian structure 
in which there are very heavy mind control techniques mm -hmm. um, used on the people in which there's a, a vertical kind of relationship, not um, horizontal would be um, talking one person to the other, one member to another mm -hmm. this way, the authority is in the group, all making decisions together, decisions together vertically. It all comes from on high, the leader, everybody is not directly in relation to each other so exactly. much as their relationship has to do with all of their relationship with this leader on mm -hmm. high. So, <coughs> so it's like this animal farm kind of thing where there's this, this great master kind of... Yeah, um, real belief in, in the leader. What you have are um, strict controls on um, things like diet, sexuality, mm -hmm. um, right. really the, the freedom of... Strange. There's no other way to describe it. You have the teenagers who had uh, those three boys who had killed that girl in uh, New Jersey they were part of a satanic cult. They dressed alike. They did this kind of ritual killing, actually. Um, however, with Heaven's Gate, what was different is that, as opposed to the People's Temple, with these people in Heaven's Gate were professional professionals. They yeah, that's true in a lot of cults. Is it? And, and um, by the way, as far as pulling the family in, People's Temple pulled whole families in. Right. That was one of the reasons that people had a hard time leaving. Oh, I because see. the groups were, the families were not kept intact in the group. Mm -hmm. They were broken up, but still the whole family being in the group. So that you would have um, oh, couples having, having sexual relations with other people. Everything so to break down the family. gentlemen and welcome to what's up with that the show that brings you interesting people places cultures and subcultures here in the South Bay the Bay Area and beyond and tonight the discussion is cults what's up with cults well recently the airwaves have been inundated with images of strange looking people wearing strange clothes uh, people willing to commit mass suicide in the name of a certain vision and right now what well, there's a cult that's up on that comet up in the air heading for space well what's up with that and what drives people into becoming a cult member well tonight in our discussion of what's up with cults I'd like to welcome our guest Dr. Keith Harari he is an editor-at-large for Omni Mag magazine and um, he's gonna give us some light on the issue of cults well, um, how would you, as an expert in um, cult activity, define a cult? What is a typical cult? When you define a cult, <coughs> you're not thinking about, you're not talking about what people believe. People mm -hmm. are, are free to believe whatever they want, mm -hmm. really. This is America.